Hi guys, listen, so my name is Alvain, um, I'm an online teacher obviously, um, I would just like to start off by uh, presenting you with a disclaimer, uh, first of all, I am not a specialist at training people to be successful at applying for online jobs, I have one single motivation for doing this, and that is that if I don't do it, I don't think anybody else is going to do it. Um, I've been following these pages now for months. I've been following them religiously. And I can see that South Africans are being treated, um, I don't want to exaggerate it, but quite badly on these pages. Uh, another thing that concerns me, and I made a post about it the other day, is for some reason some schools think it is okay to offer a native English-speaking South African with a BA degree and six years teaching experience five dollars an hour. Um, that is why I'm making this video um, and I'm playing the long game. If I do something nice, um, you know, maybe Santa will tick it and I might get a lot of presents under the tree. Sorry, but anyway, so I'm actually Christian, don't believe in Santa since last year, I'm joking. Okay, so guys, what do you need to be successful as an online teacher? Now I have to be careful again, because whoever watches this might not be from South Africa, but the reason why this video should be made is because we face unique challenges that teachers from other parts in the world don't face. They might have their own challenges, I'm really sure about that, but we also have our unique set of challenges. Um, obstacles, often. So, what do you need as a South African to be successful with an online teaching job application? First of all, and I, I know some of you might think, why is he listing this number one? Well, again, I am not a trained specialist at training other people to be successful at applying online. I'm doing this from the bottom of my heart. But I suggest that you listen. Um, because I've applied to so many schools. And if you're demotivated, don't be. I'm earning a really, really good salary at the moment. And I got turned down at least 30 times. At least 30 times. So if you've been turned down by a lot of companies, don't let that put you down. It put me down a little bit. Um, and ultimately, I didn't have any help. The only help I got, I mean, it, whatever good comes into your life comes into it by the grace of God. But my legal training enabled me to assess this calmly and objectively. And I started looking at a list of things that the companies had a problem with. For example, my background, okay? Uh, don't do an introduction video or try to teach a class with this background. Um, it's somewhere after eight o'clock in the morning now. My first class is started in a half an hour and then I'm working right through until tonight. Uh, that's why I'm making this video now. Um, it's called it a warm up. Uh, what you need when you do an introduction video or take a profile picture is to have this, it's quite difficult as I'm saying I, I'm, I'm exposing myself to the potential of being ripped apart and scrutinized but at least my intent is good but sometimes just a plain white background is better than the one I have now okay uh, I see some teachers who are successful, uh, they go stand in front of a world map, uh, it makes you look like a teacher, for lack of a better expression, or uh, they would have these alphabetic magnets stuck to a whiteboard behind them with some happy, happy pictures. That could certainly help, uh, both with the profile picture and definitely... Um, with your introduction video as well. Uh, okay, so I've got my headset on now. I really don't need to wear it. I'm just doing it to illustrate that that is what you should 
be doing when you're taking your profile picture or doing your introduction video. I'm shooting this video on my tablet quickly. It's, 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 it's not a hardcore professional job. Um, I just want to show you a few things that might help you. Um, first of all, these schools need to know that you will never ever be affected by uh, uh, load shedding. That is one of our greatest obstacles as South Africans. There are many provinces in China that regard South African teachers very highly because there's a couple of thousand of us over there who's doing really well and, and um, building us a really good reputation. I think it was two years ago. Uh, again, don't quote me. Uh, uh, this is, I'm not saying this is a fact of the matter, but I was listening to Afrikaans radio and I heard, I think it was two years ago, a South African girl won Teacher of the Year award in China, which is an incredible achievement considering where most of those teachers come from and how many teachers we have in China. So I'm only saying this to motivate you a little bit. And from what I could hear, she was also Afrikaans. But that did not make her any less of a native speaker. So we'll get to that a little bit later on. So make sure that the company that you're applying for knows that load shedding won't affect you. How do you assure them of that? Well, first of all, you have a laptop and most laptops have a six hour battery time could get a UPS, although I think that's a waste of time and money because you have, if you have six hours on your laptop, uh, and I only use a laptop, uh, it should be plenty. Then you should show them that you have a dongle. And I was going to show you my dongle, but I forgot it now and I'm not going to get up. But everybody knows what a dongle is. Now, you just show them, I will take this dongle, stick it into my laptop, and the power can go. Then they'll say to you, sure, okay, you've got really good, actually guys, you won't believe it, but I did a speed test on my dongle, and it takes me to almost 15 Mbps. In other words, the speed that I was getting from my dongle was better than the speed that I was getting from my uh, Wi-Fi. So, uh, okay, you have to pay for the data, but it's absolutely worth it. It's better than losing your job or not getting a job at all. Uh, so... Somebody who's going to argue that is just wasting their time. I'm not going to listen. I, I've got my dongle. I keep it with me. And in addition to which, I have this. It's one of those uh, load shedding lights. Okay, sorry. Um, and you can see I have it on all the time. You see now it's off and now it's on. Now this little thing, also six hours. It doesn't even cost 200 bucks got four of them. Maybe you don't need four. But okay, imagine you're teaching at night and you need lighting because, okay, fine, now you, you've got battery power on your laptop and you've got a dongle, but your kids can't see you. So show them the light, show them the dongle, show them that you are prepared. Because trust me when I tell you, most of the schools in Southeast Asia consider us a high risk factor because of load shedding. Um, I worked in Thailand for many years, in Vietnam for a really long time, and in Germany. And uh, so I know what their attitudes are. Show them. They don't want to hear you telling them. I literally have it on me, and then they'll be like, wow, okay, you know, this guy has sorted out, or, or woman, whatever. Right, so. Once you've established that you have a stable internet connection and nothing will disrupt your classes, okay, now, now you're getting closer to giving them what they want, all right? It's obstacle number one, probably the biggest obstacle that, you see, you'll get turned down by some schools and they'll give you feedback and they'll tell you um, you didn't look presentable, they'll complain about your background, uh, which I, I, in the beginning, some of it was slightly insulting, but now I love it because I, I made a list of things that they complained about. And well, the list got bigger 
And uh, yes, my success rate also went up. The bigger that list got, the bigger my success rate was. I mean, yesterday, guys, somebody was advertising for an online teaching job on this page where I'm posting this video now. I can't take more work. As it is, I'm overloaded. But I went through the application process just to see. And this was a decent school. It's $15 an hour. You sit, uh, 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 the only thing they require, which is a little bit awkward for some, not for me, is a half an hour free trial lesson. It's, it's not an issue for me because I work for Amazing Talker. And I know that I use those trial lessons to draw my students in. Uh, so I don't care. I'll give them 30 minutes for free. But after that, they're going to pay me $15 an hour or more. Um, I have many students at the moment that are paying me $20 an hour, which is even for a so-called native speaker. Uh, so we'll get to that debate just now. But even for them, if you get 25 hours a week on $20 an hour, do the maths. You're certainly going to earn <clears throat> significantly more than the average South African teacher earns in class. Um, no, and in addition to which, you don't have to attend extracurricular activities, draft or mock exams. Sometimes you are responsible for your own uh, teaching material. That shouldn't be an issue to you. Don't go into a panic when they tell you, okay, you've got to produce your own teaching material. Why do you need to do that? You need PowerPoint. And f you know how long it takes me to prepare for a class that's 15 minutes long? 12, 10 minutes. And the more often you do it, the better you, you get at it. And every time you teach a class, you save that PowerPoint. You don't delete it. Because um, in, a, in maybe two or three weeks, you'd get a class on the same topic. Maybe it's an older or a younger student. You can still use that, that, that PowerPoint. You just edit it a little bit. Uh, based on possibly... Uh, specific requirements. All right. So now I'm, I'm going to try to make this as quickly as possible, but at the same time, I don't want to leave out so many things that the video becomes useless. The first thing, guys, that you need is a good profile picture. Because the first thing they will ever see of you is that profile picture. Some schools don't even invite you for an introduction video if they don't look at your profile pic and like it. So your profile pic is incredibly important. Um, I started off using a very professional profile pic. Um, I mean, it was a decent, neat picture. There was nothing wrong with it. A high resolution but the problem was, I realized afterwards, I don't look very approachable for a six-year-old child. I mean, consider the fact that I'm 40 years old. Okay, that should not, it shouldn't be a problem if you do what I tell you. So none of these applications went anywhere. So I thought, okay, you know what, Alvin, the one thing you're bloody good at is doing stupid, funny things. I am really good at that. And I have a lot of energy. That's why I'm like, I look like somebody that's had two monsters already. In fact, I've only had tea, so I'm proud of myself. Right. So I took some pictures, downloaded it from my Facebook, from when I was in Thailand and Vietnam. Okay. It wouldn't help me to, to use a profile picture of me with my students while I was in Germany. Because it doesn't show that I have experience working with Asian kids. And that is a completely, completely different experience to teaching Western children. I suspect a South African teacher would have no problem adapting to teaching kids in Germany. I didn't. Well, mild adaptions because, I mean, uh, that and the fact that you have to pick up German pretty quickly. Uh, and they're slightly more stubborn. But otherwise, 
They're pretty much like South African kids at the end of the day. Also a dangerous statement to make. Because they won't swear at you or slap you in general. But Asian kids, they, they're brought up in such a very different culture to us. That there are so many things about them that you just don't understand. And my years in Asia gave me that experience to understand. For example, they're not big on hugs and they're not big on human contact. And you can't speak as loudly as I'm speaking now. I'm only doing it for the purposes of making this video. But usually you should tone down your voice a little bit, okay? Always try to look into the camera in a way that it seems that you're looking the student in the eye. Uh, that's really important. Um, most of you have beautiful accents um, and as you all know there are millions of South Africans that only speak English fine most South Africans are rather bilingual uh, I can hit some Tosa I was raised on a farm uh, I, my daughter is German so I speak fluent German but you're not teaching German or Afrikaans or Tosa you're teaching English okay so when you do your introduction video, come across as being extremely competent at speaking English. Um, some teachers even practice what they're going to say. It just doesn't suit my personality because I've tried that and then I become really robotic and withdrawn. But the way that I'm even speaking to you now, this is how I speak to my kids. I'm always busy, always using my hands, always interacting or provoking interaction. Um, that is really important. Now, I'm also going to say another thing that could get me into big trouble, which is why I don't like posting videos on, 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 on pages, because all I'm really trying to do is to help you. Uh, and I might get ripped apart by the trolls. Let them do it then. But um, I have enough self-esteem. But it's still, it's not a pleasant thing to experience. But listen to this. Teaching, <clears throat> sorry, I should have had a strep. So. Teaching these kids, okay, is 60% entertainment and 40% English. I don't think any of you are so surprised about what I'm going to say now, but consider this. You've got a six-year-old child sitting on the other side of the world. Why do they want to have an online teaching class? Sure, they want to improve their English. I have no doubt about that. That might actually be their, their, their main objective is to improve their English. But in the back of their heads, this is an opportunity to meet a foreigner who is sitting in a strange country elsewhere. So it's an adventure to them and an experience. Okay. And if you're not going to make it fun, and in, in, your, in your introduction video, you need to create the impression that you have the capacity to make these classes fun. I've done introduction videos with my cap on and got the jobs. It's said expressly, don't cover your head or your face with anything. Disregarded the instruction. This cap makes me look a little bit younger. I can put props on it, okay, because it's Christmas time. Uh, and my kids like it. And you know what happens when your kids like you and your ratings go through the roof? They offer you bonuses. They'll offer you more hours and possibly also increase your hourly rate. So don't be short-sighted. And you need to take risks as a South African when applying to these jobs. Because you have to stand out. Because we got red flagged because of the load shedding. And the fact that our president went on to national television and indi indicated that he can't count in English. I'm not being political. I'm telling you, two years ago, we were still a native-speaking country. The only one in Africa as far as I know. 
So many of you watching this video, many of you were born into a native speaking country and now you have to adapt to, to, this, to this label that we're no longer a native speaking country. But what people around the world don't realize is even if your mama is Tosa or Afrikaans or English, everybody in South Africa communicates with each other almost exclusively in English. I mean, when was the last time you went into pick and pay and ordered everything in Tosa or Afrikaans? It's silly. We don't even think about it. It's just, it's a unique characteristic of South Africa. We have 11 official languages and people think, okay, um, so what do these guys actually speak? Well, the answer is simply English. And I think the only real except for infrastructure, long-lasting gift that British imperialism gave us is this capacity to speak English on native level. That's the only gift they gave us that is, it, it, it has caused us to experience some sort of an advantage from being a British colony. Now, I mean, it's exactly the same situation in Canada, New Zealand, Australia, Ireland and Scotland. Although the Irish kids are now learning Gaelic at school, I'm not wasting your time by making these statements. I want you to understand, at the end of the day, these are the things these schools consider. So, okay, you get a job. Maybe you have a degree, maybe you don't have a degree. Everybody needs a TFL. Now, how do you introduce yourself? You say, hi, my name is Alve. I have 10 years teaching experience and I am a UK certified teacher. What does that mean? It sounds really impressive, but the only thing it means is that I've got a TFL. A TESOL is an American certification, which is basically exactly the same thing as a TFL, but set by American standards. They love hearing that you are a UK certified teacher. There's nothing unethical about doing it. It is just about how you present yourself. Okay, so moving around and fidgeting like I am moving around and fidgeting is a really good example of what you should be doing when having an interview or making a demo video because they know people like me will sit today for six and seven hours and teach nonstop. I might have a smoke break somewhere in between. And then that's it. And then I'm locked up in front of this laptop until 6 o'clock tonight. Often, when the Beijing times don't clock up with hours very nicely, oh, I have to make some interesting compromises with my girlfriend because some of these students pay $25 an hour and then I wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning and teach from 2 to 5. So... I do it. I don't care. Because I don't have a boss. I don't have to clock in and out. I don't even have to drive to work and back again. Wake up in the morning, make sure that I have good internet connection, my software and my laptop is running well, and that's all. And I don't need anybody else's opinion. As long as my employer is happy and my kids are enjoying their classes, then I'm safe. Okay, so... Step number one, a really good profile pic. So my, in my profile pic that I use most of the time, I'm smiling with two Thai kids climbing me like a tree on the back and the other one with his head. Don't quite know what was up that day. I think we had some sort of a sports day or an occasion at that school. I don't know, but it makes me look approachable. It doesn't matter if you're a pretty girl. If you're a pretty girl and you're looking at this video, because in reality, most attractive women know that they're attractive. You will have to approach things differently. You can't use your beauty to get these kids to like you. Sometimes if you're really pretty, it's intimidating to them. The big trick is, and I'm sorry if I'm repetitive, but you need to look friendly and approachable. So if you have a profile picture, you need to be happy. 
you need to look like somebody that somebody else would like to hug for a lack of a better way of expressing myself. So you need to look huggable and warm and cozy and friendly. Asian kids love that, the employers love that, and who can blame them? I mean, this, some of these Asian kids are lovely. It takes, uh, often takes a long time to build up trust with them. But once they like you, they're incredibly loyal, and they'll only want teacher Alvin to teach them. Whether it's spoken English, grammar, spelling, pronunciation, once you climb into their little hearts, they will request same teacher over and over okay so that is your angle get a good profile pic make sure your employer realizes that nobody is going to uh, nobody or nothing is going to interfere with your classes obviously guys if somebody is going to come into your room while you're teaching and making a no and start making a noise I'm not going to blame any online company for finding you $30 I'm not going to, not because I'm harsh or rude, but I'm faced with the same issues. I put things up on my door, okay? Do not enter by penalty of death. That includes my family, my girlfriend, my daughter, everybody. You're not being rude. You're actually being... Uh, how would I put this? You are the one who's earning the income that buys the food and pays the rent. You just so happen to do it at home. There's no disgrace. I used to teach law at a university. And I used to lecture 250 students per class. I could very likely go back to it. I just won't. I earn, even as a senior lecturer, I, I'm earning significantly more teaching English online than I ever did at the university. I wouldn't say quite, would say double, but very close to double, in addition to which I don't have to draft and mark countless question papers and answer sheets. So, now, if they're going to ask you if you're a native speaker or not, I always say yes. And then they like, often come up, like this one Vietnamese school, two weeks ago. Um, and I'll tell you why I keep on applying. I'll, I'll justify that just now. Uh, they, they said to me, no, but South Africa is no longer a native-speaking country. And I said to her, wait, you know what I'll do? I'll send you an introduction video. And if the HR manager can tell you where I am from, I'll work for $15 an hour got the job offer. He could probably tell because I do know that I have a South African accent. But at the same time, at the same time, he saw that I could speak advanced native level English, which is more than I can say for some Americans and some Brits. And I don't mean to say anything bad about them because some of my dearest friends abroad, even my girlfriend when I was abroad was a British girl. And I loved her dearly, and she was a competent teacher. I'm just saying, some of them have incredibly heavy accents. Uh, take, for example, uh, in the south of, of England, you'd have Cogni. Can I have a glass of water? Where's my water? I mean, I don't think that guy would get the job either. So, uh, but that is a native speaking accent. So what is your angle? Try to pronounce every word very well. Now, it's not going to be like that every day. You need to motivate yourself by telling yourself, this is just to get my foot into the door. This is about a profile pic, an introduction video, and possibly a demo video, uh, or a, 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 a demo class, and an interview. Once you have passed those stages, you don't have to sit and, 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 and break your head on every single word that you're going to use while teaching. Because many of these schools actually encourage you to use a lot of initiative. What you do have to worry about is your ratings at those schools. So once you get the job, but your ratings go down, then you get into trouble. But 
if the kids like you and you're entertaining and stupid like I am, I know I, I don't look like George Clooney on a camera. I don't care. What I do know is I don't need to look like George Clooney. I, I am better off looking like Jim Carrey. And I'm pretty sure I can pull that off. Because in, as an online teacher, George Clooney would go bankrupt and Jim Carrey would become a millionaire. It's like I said, it's an entertainment. It's, 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 it's a sort of a game that you play. But don't become unethical about it. Your kids and their level of English, or the, it should be your first priority. But I mean, I have a little girl at six years old. It was very difficult for her to sit down for an hour and concentrate on anything. Um, she loved spending time with me. She can barely speak any English. She's horrible, but... Um, it's, I, I haven't had the time to teach her, and when I do, she doesn't want to learn from her dad. So it's not because I'm an asshole. Um, what I'm trying to say to you is, give them something to look forward to. Because a six-year-old dreads the idea of sitting down for an hour. Unless there's something on the other side. Like a documentary, or a movie, or a baby shark. So I'm not saying you've got to go hit it and sing baby shark. But you have to be entertaining. They'll give you high ratings. The parents will see the kids are happy. They'll book you for another month. And there you go. And as your ratings go up, so does your income and your employability. Okay, guys. So those were the most important things that you should take into account. I see I'm on 31 minutes. Um, there's still so many other things that I should tell you as well. Uh, so I just hope I don't have trouble uploading this video on YouTube. Um, I'm going to, in my YouTube video, give you two links at the bottom there. The one is a mega list, uh, which was professionally uh, uh, put together by some guy that I that I met online. Um, and then there's going to be a, another list, which I sort of threw together. I am not going to promise you that all those schools are hiring. I'm not going to promise you that all those schools don't need a degree. Some might, some, but many won't require it. Okay. What I can tell you is between those two links, you will have more than 150 options. Now, everybody's going to go, wow, that's, don't be excited about that. Because you might get turned down 150 times. That would not be new. So I gave a mate of mine one of those uh, uh, what's it, mega lists. He didn't get a job from any of those companies. Listen to what I tell you. You don't have to. Um, I'm sure other teachers approach it completely differently to the way that I do. But then again, not so many other foreign professional online teachers face the same obstacles we do, which is my, why I made this video as well. Because as South Africans, we have unique issues to deal with. When somebody posts a job, it infuriates me beyond words. I don't have the vocabulary to explain to you how much this annoys me. Somebody puts up an ad, and in that ad it says, okay, uh, we have a new company, $15 an hour, uh, 10 hours a week. Don't go to the comment section and put interested there. I promise you, you will not get the job. Uh, I have never met anybody that's got the job from putting interested there. I saw it when I posted my comment there. You write interested. I'm sorry, I'm not being critical or rude to anybody. I love you guys so much that I'm taking my morning routine and giving it to you because it's the only f free time I'm going to have until this evening. I love you guys dearly. But if you're going to just type interested, who the hell is going to help you? I don't care if every second other guy types interested there. You're not going to stand out. But then every second guy looks lazy. It just really looks lazy. 
I, ha I, I made a few video calls last night. Uh, uh, my first post, I got 300 and something uh, comments. Not because I'm hardcore or this uh, endless tree of knowledge. But people people are, want help. People want to get jobs. And I thought, I mean, uh, uh, Nero is laughing while Rome is burning down. So nobody's doing anything about it. So I thought, let me use my stupid approach to this. But my stupid approach, with that approach, some months you know, if I pull my socks up, as we say, I could earn 70,000 Rand a month. And if I, if, if I were ever in trouble, I could earn even more. So I only need five hours sleep. And if I work all those midnight Beijing shifts at 20 plus dollars an hour, I could even earn more than that. It's not because I am better than you are. Because I promise you I am not. But I am significantly more persistent. And I don't get put down by people turning me down for job applications. That might be one difference. Okay. So you get this mega list. And you work through that list. So one is a mega list. So that's why I use singular. It was not a grammatical error. I did it intentionally. The one is a mega list. And the other one I sort of put together. Some Japanese schools in there. I've heard good for, uh, things about them. I am not going to stand in for any of those schools. I'm just going to say to you, there you go. You have an opportunity. But don't fill in a single application thinking, oh, I have so many options now. If this one turns me down, then I'll be fine and I'll get a job elsewhere. You might not. Don't fool yourself. Take every application bloody serious and if you do get a job then continue looking for more jobs because the one school might close down uh, it might have a trouble with its advertising campaign you might lose hours and then your income goes up and down any one of my schools can suffer now because I've got portfolios with four different schools which was also not easy to maintain in the beginning. But now I'm kind of sorting it out. Um, I'm not the most organized individual in the world, but I figured out a system that works pretty well. Um, I'm on 37 minutes. I'm sorry, but because I can't speak to you one-on-one -on -one like I tried with the Zooms. But listen to the stuff I'm telling you. I'm working for Amazing Talker, for example. Um, I registered with them. It's a hell of a story to register there. Uh, they will take you without a degree. They take native speakers, non-native speakers. Many uh, teachers have criticized Amazing Talker and walked away from them. I'm not one of them. My primary source of income is with Amazing Talker now. But it's because I was persistent. In my first six weeks with him, I had one class. It wasn't even an English class. It was a German student. So I was teaching German. And then I did my Alvain thing. Oh my goodness, I hope I don't get into trouble for this advice. I made a video in the kitchen. Like a sort of a, a free... Um, kitchen demo class where I go through what you find in the kitchen all right so as I went through the kitchen I opened up the fridge and I saw these chilies there and I thought what the hell whatever <gasps> okay guys what are these these are chilies so I shoved five chilies into my mouth those really hot ones and I burned like Danto's Inferno it was hot as hell I was tearing Okay, then I thought, let's go next level. What do I have to lose? I'm not getting any bookings. I took raw eggs, broke them, swallowed them whole. Uh, these skills I picked up in pubs all over South Africa. Don't judge me. I'm one of you. Uh, and I swallowed these eggs. So, so, okay, well, I was, when I train, sometimes I use eggs as protein, but it tastes, raw eggs don't taste really nice. And I looked super stupid.
But while my girlfriend was shooting the video, okay, she was laughing so much that she could barely stand up straight. Okay, because she thought it was really, really funny. And then when I looked at the video afterwards, I thought, oh, dude, you're going to lose your job. Posted it. Got well over 600 views. Booked ever since. I've been booked ever since. Fully. Uh, and the bookings are just coming in and in. What did I do with that video? I, I took my ego. Uh, my And Afrikaner people are known for having egos. I just set it aside. And I remember what I learned in Thailand and Vietnam. And I applied that experience. I am not advising you to do what I did. I am simply telling you. I made an absolute debt out of myself. And I'm still reaping the rewards because I have students asking me for new videos. I've got those students hooked on me. I, I, I don't have to stress at night anymore. I know they always, always come back to me. And I, I, I don't even use my own name. Alvin is a, a Danish name. I, uh, on Amazing Talker, I'm Teacher Andy because it's easy. So you need to be creative. And all my profiles are written in uh, um, Mandarin. What's it? Uh, Chinese Simplified. <gasps> what? What? There's nothing funny about it. It's, it's clever, sure. But there's nothing funny or unethical because I don't claim to be Chinese speaking. All I did was I took what Google has to offer and I used it. Because why do you think people come to you to learn English? Obviously because they can't speak English. So you write this beautiful love letter there about how you love your kids and explain to them in very complicated terms, how your courses are set out, blah, blah, blah. And this kid sits there and can't understand a single word of what you're saying. Wasted your time drafting that profile. But go to Google Translate, translate that entire profile into Mandarin. <laughs> a huge amount of the students on Amazing Talker and many other platforms that is their primary language. That's their native language. Okay. So they'll scroll through many, the absolute majority of other teachers, but they'll see that your profile is written in their native language. If nothing else, they will have a huge amount of respect for you for the effort that you put in. And they'll feel that they can relate to your profile. Okay. So... Guys, um, I'm going to try and open up the comments section on my YouTube video. I am, uh, some guys from elsewhere are going to watch this video and rip me apart, uh, which is why I said, I, I don't care as long as I go home and I earn my income and my classes are fully booked and I get paid uh, native speaking hourly rates, then they can say about me what they want. But if you need some more advice and you're a suffer, actually that's unfair. Um, I made this video for South Africans, but if you're from somewhere else and you're struggling and no matter what you do, you're not getting in, you can drop me a comment on my comment section on my YouTube video. And when I have free times, sometimes on weekends, if I don't respond immediately, it's not because I don't care. Um, but you'll also notice I'm not giving you referral numbers, nothing. I don't want anything from you. I just spent 44 minutes of my life making this video to show you guys that some of us do care. But the absolute majority of us, even the ones who care, don't do anything about it. Because it is so risky to do anything on social media these days without being made out to be something horrible. Um, so if this video has helped you in any way, then good for you. You don't even have to thank me. I'm doing this from the bottom of my heart. I would like it if you send me an inbox and tell me, listen, uh, Alvin, I got a job. Thank you. 
that would make my day. But other than that, I want nothing from you. I want you to get a job, okay? And and possibly some of you who will be watching this have a BA degrees. Then at least I'll be happy because I helped you to get paid an hourly rate that you are worth. And then there might be some of you watching this without a degree. And then I'll be also I'll be really proud of you because many people told you it cannot be done. And yet it is done. Nelson Mandela said everything is impossible until it is done. Okay, so guys, I, I'm not a, I'm not Tony Robertson, I'm not some motivational speaker. But don't think you're not going to succeed in this. Just be persistent and thick skinned. And when people make uh, give you feedback that you don't like, don't take it personal. These, these people at these schools don't have time to insult you on a personal level. Though it's, it's actually, uh, I recommend that every single school who turns down a teacher gives them feedback on why. Because it makes them a better teacher. Okay. So... I was thinking sometime in the future, uh, I'm utterly exhausted. I only slept four hours last night. You don't need to feel sorry for me. In fact, be happy for me because that means I've made a lot of money yesterday. But I'm a little bit tired now. I haven't covered quite everything that I wanted to cover. Um, if you want me to make you a video regarding how you should teach, where to get teaching material once you get a job, um, and how to use uh, uh, specific types of material that's really good for your demo, uh, um, for your demo classes during your interview process. Write it there in the comments section, and uh, I could help you with that. But in your head, first thing is profile picture. Put some kids into the picture, even though they tell you don't. Don't care. Put a little kid giving you a hug. It makes you look friendly and approachable. Secondly, your introduction video. Don't sit still. Don't fidget. Uh, yeah, you can fidget. Fidget means you've got energy. You must understand, they look at us completely differently to the way that a conventional Western interview would take place. And I actually agree with them because this is their demand. Show them that you can give it. And be happy. Don't go into the uh, introduction video stressing. Am I going to get the job? Am I not? C'est la vie. You can't control so many things. But you can allow your energy and your enthusiasm to transcend a digital camera. And the only way to do that is to be a little bit like me. Not that, I, again, it sounds like I'm, I'm narcissistic. I, I just mean, like, just get jacked up. Oh, don't, don't take drugs. Drugs are bad, okay? I'm just saying, it's like, get that movement in. Be happy and uh, make it seem like you can go on like that for hours and hours because you'll have to. Anyway, guys, I love you all. Um, if you want anything else from me, like I said, preferably in my YouTube comment section, but you could also comment on the post, uh, the comment section there. Look at the description in the YouTube video at the bottom. I will give you a mega list and some teaching job links. Spend a lot of time on them. Make sure that your profiles are good. And when you have your interviews and your introductions, don't, hello, my name, no, 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 probably won't even work in South Africa, although we are weird people. Some people in South Africa might actually get a kick out of seeing somebody else nervous. They don't. Smile, be happy. Say to yourself, as God is my witness, I am going to do my best. My brother taught me, only worry about the things that you can do something about. It's pointless worrying about other things. I can't worry about the sun coming up or setting because I have no control over it. But this is something that I can do something about. So I'd rather productively 
invest my energy into doing my best. Okay, guys, go out there, do your best, make South Africa look good. Don't be late for your classes, get good internet connection. And if you need help, just write in the comment section, either on YouTube or on Facebook. I really sincerely wish you all the best. Okay, thank you.